anything for Valentine's Day. We thought that we hadn't done anything for Valentine's Day. I don't know if you guys came across something called Galentine's. Uh, it's where like two friends, uh, women, feel like they should celebrate, you know, their love, their connection as friends, yeah, as friends because of the support that we keep, you know, uh, getting from each other. So there's Valentine's Day. Apparently, it's, it happens on 13th before Valentine's Day. Yeah. I actually got to celebrate Galentine's, though at that time, I didn't know that it was Galentine. It was called Galentine's. Uh, a friend of mine is, um, is single, and I felt like, uh, why not? Yeah, let's do this so that she doesn't, that day came and she didn't feel so, you know, alone. Because sometimes those days can get lonely or you can get to start thinking, you know, uh, why I'm in time with someone or, yeah. So just uh, maybe very quickly in that chat, uh, you could share with us what you did for Valentine's Day. Or you can even unmute and tell us just like two minutes. Let's just use two minutes. You share with us what you did for Valentine's Day. Ladies, this is your conversation. <laughs> Please unmute and share with us what you did for Valentine's Day. I'm going to pick randomly. And it's okay if you didn't do anything. It's okay if you bought yourself flowers. It's okay if, I don't know, your colleague bought you lunch. It's very okay. Ladies. Okay. For Valentine's Day, I think. <laughs> uh -huh. Stella says it was her very first time to be woken up and showered with good messages and taken out for lunch. Wow, 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 wow. Ladies, what happened to the rest of you? Harriet Musoke, I can see you online. What did you do for Valentine's Day? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Let's I... share the other first slide first. <laughs> <laughs> really? Me a lady of yeah. 50 years and above. Yes. Ask those young girls. Anyway, I got flowers for my husband. Thank you. Oh, nice. People here in love. Uh, Harriet celebrated 25 years in marriage and uh, she's still growing strong. Harriet, we admire you and envy you and are happy for you. Thank you. What did you get? What did you do for Valentine's yourself? Uh, I, I got flowers, actually. I don't like to go out on Valentine's Day, but I got flowers. Ladies. Mm -hmm. Rita Mugera, do you want to share with us what you did for Valentine's Day? Rona. God. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Okay. Uh, um, uh, hope you're having a good afternoon. What I did for Valentine as consolation was mm. first of all, we had planned with a, a colleague in office. Mm. So we bought for everyone at our workplace mm. flowers, okay, okay, one sweet. rose, and mm. a chocolate. And we wrapped like a red ribbon around it and wrote their names. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Oh, From the organization sweet. I work. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want to join your organization because, you know, if, if <laughs> love is not coming from elsewhere, it can come from work. Huh? <laughs> I like what Maria said. Some of us were busy reading statuses all day. <laughs> I did that too. I was looking at people's, you know, status, the memes that were going around on Twitter. Guys, what about the rest of you? This is your conversation. Sanyu Nalule. Alison Nagasha. Brenda at Kwatse.
ladies. And it's okay for you to say that you didn't do anything. Fortunate. I actually just joined in. I just didn't hear the question. So that's why I'm quiet. Okay. So the question is, what did you do for Valentine's Day? For myself or my partner? Um, for both. If some people celebrated together, other people, you were on the receiving end and you didn't feel like giving anything. Normally, us ladies, we, we are expectant. I was on the receiving end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what did we receive? <laughs> what did we receive? What did I receive? I received a yes. car. Yeah. A car. Woo, you guys, people are receiving cars. <laughs> that is such, such a beautiful, beautiful gift. Okay, Rita says her organization where they gave uh, people flowers was Kids Club Kampala. That's beautiful. Okay, no, it's not strong minds, Maria. I think you've seen. Ladies, no one else wants to share fortunate. Nancy Reco, oh, someone, Maria. Okay, please, you raise your hand. Tell us. Uh, first of all, I receive a car in Jesus' name too. Amen. And <laughs> um, I, I just remembered, I was, you, as you kept on asking, I was like, hmm, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. And mm. I've just remembered. I, mm -hmm. I, um, I surprised my grandma, not mm -hmm. her, okay, grandma and ma with lunch because um, I was in Gulu and Maria, I don't know if it's just me, but you're breaking. Some restaurant, I told them to my valentine. We've missed the most Can part. I don't know if it's my network. We stopped at lunch in Gulu. Even up to now, you can't hear me. Now we can hear you. Oh, I was saying, mm. um, I I arranged with some restaurant at home uh, to take um, lunch to my mother and my grandmother. Well, that was sweet. Yeah. Oh, that was so sweet. Thank you so much for sharing. I think most people decided either to, to do something for someone they love or for us, we remembered our first meeting, which was 13th Feb and we celebrated that day. Wow, this is sweet as well. You see, this is like an anniversary of sorts. So yeah, different people did different things. Some people didn't do anything for different reasons. Probably they were busy with work were apart. Some people decided even if they are long, doing long distance or their partner is not around, they celebrated in some way. Some people celebrated with their kids. Uh, yeah, some people celebrated with friends, other people at work. Yeah. Why did we choose to uh, talk about this Valentine's Day? So if you're in a workspace, um, the other question was, why has Valentine's Day become increasingly such a big deal? Especially in Uganda, I think 10 years ago, Valentine's Day, I don't know if it was celebrated as much as it is now. Ideally, you could, you could also feel that like the anxiety towards that day. Like I remember going to, I think it was Forest Mall, 13th, and there were flowers around um, the supermarkets, the people, the florists were so extremely busy, yeah? And the next morning, I remember it was the same. It's like as if, you know, uh, everyone wanted flowers, everyone was delivering flowers. If you are a border guy and you are not busy, I guess you, you did, many people did not know the work that you do. So today we are going to talk about relationship CPR and what to do when love is no longer being served. That is a question, and that is a, the thing that we, when you, when you hear a relationship CPR, what comes to mind? Very quickly in the chat, what comes to your mind 
when you hear relationship CPR. Ladies, everyone has heard of CPR. Now imagine CPR in a relationship. Basically, you could, you could say that, um, okay, like first aid for a dying, yes, Rita, yes, it's first aid for a dying relationship, yeah, or for a failing relationship. Though for us, it's like a different, the CPR stands for different, um, it is content, pattern, and relationship, which I'll explain later. Let's go to the second slide, um, fortunate. Okay. There's a question above, yeah. Why was Valentine's Day such a big deal? And let me share with you what I think. Of course, I'll pick one or two people to share with me what they think, why it has become such a big deal. So when Valentine's Day happens, that day of wherever you are, for some reason, even when you don't mind it, there are people who don't believe in it, there are people who don't find any reason to celebrate it, even if they're in loving relationships. It depends on what matters to you or your partner, yeah? If you're the kind who have never celebrated it or who don't feel the need to celebrate that day, saying you celebrate love every day, or you don't feel like honoring that day, for some reason, when that day comes, there is pressure, there's anxiety, there's expectation. And this is what happens. For instance, if you're in a workspace, yeah? You come to work, you're busy with your work and everyone is doing you know, whatever they're supposed to do. Maybe you're going for meetings, you have deadlines, you're writing a report, you're in a meeting, then they come and announce. Um, Patricia Kente, there's a delivery for you. After that, five minutes later, they announce, Bran Mugisha, there's uh, lunch has been delivered for you. After some time, your friend, your next, uh, that person on the next desk, Maria Chomhendo, they are, your flowers are here. So if you're the kind who doesn't celebrate or if you're not relating with anyone or your relationship could be in injury, yeah? Or like, like either your relationship is admitted where there is no longer love or there's no longer uh, that thoughtful, environment where you're thinking, okay, what can I do for my partner? Or what would my partner want on this day? So when you start to see all these things around other people, every table has maybe flowers. If it's a man, he has received maybe food or lunch or something, and yours doesn't have. Immediately, your brain starts to tell you that you're the only one who has, who has, like, who has been left out of this celebration. Even when you don't care for it from the beginning, your brain slowly starts to convince you that you have been left out, that you're missing out. What people call FOMO, fear of missing out. So it starts to build as the day goes on, yeah? I remember that there's a, a meme that I saw like on 15th and there's a, uh, someone saying that this day, 15th Feb is called um, Moses Yadeka message which meant, people don't understand Luganda, which meant that you are ideally expectant, but at least the person should have done the bare minimum of saying happy Valentine's Day, is even if they wouldn't have given you flowers, yeah? So as this, um, as this uh, anxiety or this fear, this thing of missing out, you feel like you know, you're the only one who has missed out, as your brain starts to, to talk to you, then after some time, you actually feel like you are deserving of every other person what they've got, you are also deserving. Then you start to feel like you are being humiliated or ashamed for not having received anything. Then you start to feel like you're being stripped that not even a letter came for you, yeah? Now, these are things that are going on in your head. Yes, you may try to suppress them. Yes, but bottom line is when everyone is receiving something, there is, there is a certain thought in your head that why not me? Yes, you may console yourself and say, uh, me, I don't care. Me, I don't care for that. Me, I'm not. Uh, if you're not dating anyone, if you're not in a relationship, that's different also. But if you're in a relationship 
and you actually don't get this stuff. Sometimes you start to want them, even when you started out not wanting them, yeah? So that's what creates a big deal. You start to see other people and you're wondering, what about me? Don't I deserve the same, yeah? Yes, you're happy for them, but you're feeling like you're being left out. Uh, fortunate, I think you've opened so many tabs and it's covering the, it's covering the slide. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, so today, relationship CPR and what to do when we are, when love is no longer being served. Uh, we are going to, number one, it's like a guide and it's like step-by-step -step guide and we're going to work out this thing together, yeah? So a simple guide to getting the best out of your relationship because if your relationship needs CPR, it means it's failing. It means there are parts of it that are not working. And I know that at a certain point in a relationship, either you feel ex emotionally exhausted, physically tired, like you reach a point where you're feeling like, you're talking, but the person is not hearing you. You're talking, but the person is not understanding you. You have needs, but the person is not, for some reason there's a disconnect. Everyone in their relationship, marriage, at a certain point, you may get to feel like this. Sometimes it's because of the season you are in your life. Sometimes it's because your partner has stopped paying attention. Sometimes it's because of the emotional wounds that have not healed. Maybe something happened. You guys didn't deal with it or you dealt with it, but hurriedly, and they are still, you know, pain points, but somehow they are still holding space where happiness should be. It's not there. So to start off, what does love mean to you? Before we get to the relationship failing and all these things, when you get into a relationship, what does love to you mean to you individually? Yeah. What does it mean to you individually? I had certain, um, certain things noted. Yeah. What does love mean to you? You can put in the chat, guys. What does love mean to you individually as a person? You could think about love languages, yes. I find that love languages are so, it is such a small list. There are so many other things that, and please remember that as you grow, as you evolve either in your career, in, in age, in the different seasons in your life, love will mean different things, yeah? When as I think maybe 1920, chatting with me all day would have mean, meant the person loves me, the person cares for me. Right now, I, it's not the same. Right now, that's not my definition of what love would be for me. Guys, very quickly in that chat, what would love mean to you individually? And by the way, this is an exercise you can do on your own. Let me just pick randomly. Harriet, what does love mean to you? Harriet. Mm -hmm. San Yunale says, trust. If my partner communicates to me and showers me gifts. Mm -hmm. Ladies. Presence. Love equals spending time, caring, taking time to know me. Uh -huh. Angie says care. Uh -huh. My love language is quality time, fortunate, quality time and affection. Alison says um, quality time as well. <laughs> my neighbor here says money. Love is give and take, I love this, wow. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Love is time, respect, and peace. Yes, guys, when you start to describe the kind of love that you want, yeah, then you can easily communicate it to the other person that you're relating with. Because for different people, love means different things, yeah? For instance, if I want quality time and then they are giving me gifts and the person is not present, I will not feel loved. Bottom line is I have to communicate what I want, how I want to be loved. I, I gave different examples of what does love mean to you individually. And there was emotional, emotional presence. There was emotional availability, quality time, financial support, business partnership, gifts, reassurance, acceptance, um, moral, moral boosting, open expression, provision, sharing. Yeah. And I think all the things that you've said are right because they matter to you. 
And all these things that I have listed are also right. Because in any relationship, there is a reason you pick this person. You, there's a reason you pick Chimbugwe and not to see me. There's a reason you, they pick Rebecca and not Grace because their particular qualities, their particular needs that this person is going to feed. And when we talk about how you want to be loved, imagine without us knowing those are our emotional needs, yeah? When you describe how you want to be loved, that is your emotional need. Without someone serving that, they are not fulfilling your emotional need. They are not feeding your emotional need, meaning you not feel loved, yeah? So all these are emotional needs. If you're describing to a person that, for me, this matters to me, this, if it's a beginning of a relationship, the middle of, after five years, the emotional needs will keep changing, yeah? Right now, for me, my emotional need is, I need, I, ne I don't need someone to call me 20 times a day because I'll not pick the calls. However, one of my emotional needs is someone being able to understand that I am working so I can't pick because I'm in a session. And then I will, I will work late night because then I have to study after work. Then I will probably, so that they don't judge me, they don't castigate me for staying in office late. So understanding for me is one of my emotional needs. Yeah, moving on. Understand what it means to the person you're relating with, yeah? So as we try to understand what we emotionally need, what about the other person, yeah? What about, have they understood, yeah? What these things mean to you in order of priority? Because you could have number one as understanding, number two as communication, number three as uh, time. Meaning understanding is the most important. So before he does anything else, he should consider understanding you and everything else that relates to you. However, in the same breath, sometimes you have to give something to get something. If this is the deal with you and these are the deal breakers, what are the deal breakers for your partner or your spouse or your boyfriend or your husband or the person that you're in love with or the person you're relating with romantically? Understand what it means to the person you are relating with, meaning understand what their emotional needs are, yeah? Then as we move on, so first is understand what love individually means to you. Those are your emotional needs. Then understand what, they, what it means, what love means to the person you're relating with. That is your emotional needs of your partner, meaning your emotional needs, his emotional needs, and then you communicating to each other what the emotional needs, what both of you need from each other. There are things that will be the same, yeah? I will still go back to Valentine's Day. Normally we are on the expectant side and we normally don't give anything. But men have also started to ask, they've woken up and they're saying, what about me? What about us? Yes, I give you flowers, I take you to dinner, I give you a present, what about me, yeah? So if you're listening, now we are going to also start, you know, reciprocating. They give you flowers, maybe you also send, I don't know, lunch or something, a, a surprise. It may be small, it may be whatever you consider that your partner wants. Then thirdly, identify the things that have gone terribly wrong. Terribly wrong and understand what your contribution was to the problem. Now, when we are trying to understand these things that, what could go wrong in a relationship, guys? Still in the chat, what could go terribly wrong in any relationship? You have met your person, things are going well. What could destabilize it? What could put it in jeopardy? Ladies. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like Sanyu's finances, poverty. Infidelity, miscommunication. Um, <laughs> lies, yes. Mm -hmm. Alcohol, yes. Harriet, do you want to, to, to share with us more on, on alcohol? How do you think it could hurt a relationship? Please admit yourself if you can, just in 30 seconds and tell us. 
Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Aunt Grace. Thanks, Grace. Um, what can happen if your partner, it can be male, it can be female, and uh, you have things to talk about at home, you have children to raise, you have bills to pay, you are poor, and then your husband comes back or your wife comes back, and like you, you said that you would want your husband to understand you if you're working late, but guess what? Your partner can come back late, but when they're coming from a bar, and then when they come home, instead of talking about the pending bills, children are sick, you don't have a maid, you don't have matoke to cook, you don't have things to use at home, but your husband comes back and they're drunk. <laughs> so there's no way you're going to communicate to such a person, even if you, communication is your biggest strength, because you see the person is clearly finished. So that's where problems start because you have your needs as a woman or as a man, but your partner is drunk. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Harriet. Yes, alcohol can be a very, very bad vice, if not controlled. Sanyu, you said poverty. Do you want to tell us how? Poverty made me laugh. And it's, it's like, I think it's something that we all think, but the way she has said it, poverty, Sanyu, do you want to admit and share with us? Sanyu, are you there? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. uh, I think poverty is the beginning of most problems. Uh, like the previous speaker is coming home late. Uh, you lack this, you lack that. So you're like, this man has the guts to drink, but we have needs waiting. You get it's a money gap, so mm. <laughs> let you not be lied. Eh? <laughs> Poverty <laughs> is the cause of problems. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sanyu. I don't know why that answer is so funny, but I like that people are talking about finances openly because before, when you talk about you want a person who is maybe working, they have a job, they have money, they can, you know hold their ground, people will be like, so you want him for his money? It was a bit, yeah, but I like that we are talking about finances openly because it's such a big, big uh, contributor to our healthy relationship. So the things that could go terribly wrong, yeah, keep them coming in the chat. I thought of these areas, yeah? So in, in relationships, there are the five Cs, yeah? There is communication, there is commitment, there is courtesy and consideration, there is constructive conflict. Um, I don't know if I've finished them. Okay, there are about four. I've forgotten the, the fifth one. There is communication, commitment, courtesy, and consideration, and constructive conflict. Now, the things that could go terribly wrong around communication could be, number one, the language someone uses towards you, yeah? If the person is abusive, if their tone of voice is constantly either condescending or it's high or it's um, they're shouting at you when they're communicating with you or they are shaming you, maybe you're in public and the person wants to, you know, inquire something or is displeased about something and they come and shout instead of putting you to the side or waiting when you're home or when you're just in the privacy of, you know, your time together and they bring it up. Yeah. Um, secrets, keeping secrets when someone is, you know, they are not willing to share information, either what their plans are or where they are going. You've had men saying, uh, I don't want to be asked, Oliwa, where are you? You know, I would not be asking, I keep thinking, I would not be asking if you had shared in the beginning where you're going to be at or where you're going to be late. So communication is one of the areas where a relationship could go terribly wrong. The other thing is commitment. Commitment would mean commitment to each other's dreams, meaning if I'm studying, you know that of course I'm studying, my time is fast spent, meaning there are things I would have done as a woman, but now I can't do them. I can't apply myself as much as I could. So can you bear with me for the next two years and fill in the gaps where I am absent instead of you know judging me and you know um, talking about me either, telling the in-law she's not present, she's not here, she doesn't cook, she doesn't do what, all those things. Um, commitment could mean time together. There are times when life is so busy, but you have to find that time. So a relationship could go terribly wrong 
if you don't find this time. Uh, revive, roles, roles not being given, you know, like the attention that they should be given. For instance, if any man, your role or their role is to provide and to protect you. At the point where you have not decided who is providing what, yeah? I'm not saying us women, we are excluded, yeah? No, you can decide that this, I'm bringing 30% and it's bringing 70% of the bills. But whoever is doing what, stay, stick to your role and do it and be committed to it. But it could go terribly wrong if these are, your roles are neglected. Uh, the other thing is courtesy and consideration. The things that could go wrong around courtesy and consideration are so many. It, it involves putting the other person first or being in their shoes. Imagine you were unwell, but then maybe your, your mother is also unwell or your sister. Is your partner willing to say, you know what, you wanted us to buy groceries for them and drop them instead of you going, rest, let me go, yeah? Friends and family, yeah? Basically, courtesy and consideration. Anything can go wrong around there because it involves other people. It involves your family, it involves your friends, it involves your work colleagues, it involves so many other things. And the other thing is constructive conflict, yeah? Normally, relationships break around conflict. How? At the time, you, the timing of the conflict, what else are you dealing with by the time you're conflicting on this one issue? Number two, who else is part of this conflict? Number three, are you able to communicate and the other person understands, meaning effective communication, like you talk, they listen, and you don't, and you talk and they listen, not listening to reply, but listening to understand, comprehend, and then be empathetic, sympathetic, and then find a solution. So normally, Around these areas, that's when relationships can go terribly wrong because conflict is a huge thing. Communication is so important. Commitment, it takes commitment for any relationship to work. Courtesy and consideration, you have to constantly be in. Love basically means that you are constantly in consideration of the other person. Yes, you have your needs, you communicate them, but then you constantly say, what about the other person? How would they feel if I did this? What would I want? And if I can do this, am I also opening a door for them to do this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other part of this is, as you're understanding what could go terribly wrong, understand what your contribution was to the problem. Yeah. We are normally saying he does not communicate or he's always, you know, he does not give me enough money. Have you communicated? how much money you need. And if you've communicated and he has not understood, are there other avenues that you can use to make him understand? Yeah? And then if there is a particular problem, maybe it's of communication. If you say, he doesn't tell me where he is, are you sharing where you are or what you're up to? If you say, I never know his plans, are you sharing what your plans are? Or what you would want the plan, your plan together to be, yeah? Of course, different relationships have different dynamics. There are people who say, I always share. I know my person, he always shares when the thing is almost ending. Why? He doesn't want to burden me. That's the way he has always done his things. But bottom line, you have to, as you're pointing fingers, he does this, she does that. Make sure that you are able to identify your part in the process of this problem or your contribution to, what are you responsible for? Yes, there is a problem, but a problem happens between two people. What is your part in? So lastly is understand what relationship CPR is and what your relationship needs are. What your relationship needs, yeah? Some people, it needs communication, while other people, it, some relationships, they have lived and they've reached like, the lifespan of that relationship has ended and what it needs is just to end and maybe you move on or it is very, very important to understand what your relationship needs. So what is relationship CPR? I remember fortunately saying that is what she was most interested in. Relationship CPR basically is first aid to your relationship if it's failing, if it's failing to work, 
if it's bringing you sadness and anger and bitterness and resentment instead of happiness, excitement and love. And to, for you to be able to do, to apply relationship CPR, relationship CPR, if you're starting on this journey, it means basically, number one, you still want your partner. You still love them. You're still interested in making it work. You're still interested in trying. Yes, you don't know if it will work or not, but you, you would rather try fast and it fails than not trying at all. So when we look at relationships CPR, we start with C stands for content, P stands for pattern, and relationship stands for um, stands for, R, and R stands for relationship. So at all these levels, these are levels, CPR, these are levels, yeah? In a relationship, when things are not working, when things are starting to, to fail, yeah? When things are, for instance, if let's say your partner cheats on you and you find out you're going to feel betrayed, you don't feel a lot of emotions. Eh? Actually, you feel a lot of things, but there are primary emotions, then there are secondary emotions. The first emotion you might feel is betrayal. The second one might be anger. The third secondary uh, emotion might be uh, maybe resentment and bitterness, yeah? And then it will create room for other emotional wounds like you feel rejected, you feel like you have failed because half of us normally feel like if he has cheated, it's my fault. Good news is it's never your fault. Yes, you may have contributed to his choice, but the choice remains 100% his. Because if I'm not cooking for you food and you go and, and cheat and say the other girl cooks food and me, I'm not cooking the food. There is that a choice of you tabling this issue and we talk about it. You talking to my best friend and they talk to me about it. You talking to my mother and they talk to me. You sharing with your mom and depending on the relationships or the support systems that we have around us. Yeah. So normally in any relationship, let's say um, the first time something happens, that one is content level, meaning it is the first time, it's the first incident. Yeah. I remember when, um, uh, you know, when they talk to you as you're getting married, as you're relating. I remember my mom told me, I'm from the Buganda uh, tribe, and my mom told me to, long time ago, they used to put water in, in their mouth, yeah? When something happens and you're angry and you put water in your mouth. The only way you would start speaking is if uh, that water is out of your mouth. This basically meant that when something happens the first time, you may not mention it. Why? Number, sometimes you don't have reference points of the other day you did this, even the other day, even the other day. So when it has just happened, it is the content level, it is the first incident, depending again on what has happened, yeah? Different people have different temperaments, different people have different tolerance levels, different patience, you know, levels, different response time. And then the second, the, second, uh, the second time something happens, it could be a coincidence. We are assuming it could be a coincidence. But when something happens the third time, that becomes a pattern, yeah? So content level is the first time. The second time is, said CPR was content, pattern, and relationship. So first time is, the first time an incident happens, which is content level. Second time, it could be a coincidence, which where we start to establish as if a pattern, but the pattern is established at the third time something happens because then it becomes a habit because they did it the first time, the second time, the third time. So at the third time, normally, that's when people start to, you have all these reference points. That is when ideally you should be saying, you know what? The other day you did this. The other day you came back at midnight. You, I called your phone. You didn't pick. The other day you came back at 3 a.m. Your phone was off. I was worried. And now today you've come back at 6 a.m. Yeah. And normally these things, when it happens the first time, uh, yes, you may not talk about it. 
when it happens the second time, this person is very aware as well that they did this the first time, the second time. That's why you, you will realize that habits, as they grow, they become worse. The first time it happens, someone has come back at midnight, they, don't commun they did communicate, and probably your coffee is at 10. You decide that, you know what? All of us are in the house by 10, and the only time we are out of this house past midnight is when we've communicated with each other, yeah? We say, I'm going to be late for this reason. I'm at so-and-so's party. Please don't wait up. Please pick me. Please, my phone is about to black out. Things like that. The second time, the coincidence, it could have just happened and there's no relation to the first incident. But when it happens the third time, the other person already knows that I've done, I've defaulted three times. So at the third time, that's normally when you need to bring up this thing and say, you know what? I think we need to talk about this thing so if this person is not willing to hear you out on the third it could be because of so many things probably how you've approached them the timing of the conversation yeah all those things but then how do you get this person to hear you and at what point will you know that love no longer lives here maybe very quickly in the chat how can you tell that this person is no longer interested in working on us this person is no longer interested in what I like. This person is no longer interested in, you know, in the happiness of this relationship or this relationship thriving. How can you tell? How can you tell? How can you tell? The attitude, yes. Mm -hmm. They are too busy to discuss problems when they cut communication. Mm -hmm. Their actions speak louder than words. When they ignore important things, you enjoy together, yes. They stop doing the things they were doing before. Yes, keep them coming. So there are so many there are so many things that can point us to this person doesn't care anymore. Why do you think we we stay and we also decide that I'm not seeing that I'm not looking at it I'm not going to pay attention to it because normally before the relationship ends by the time it ends like let's say today you decide I'm walking away from this relationship I'm breaking up with this person I'm going to get a separation normally it ended maybe 2 3 years back why do you think we stay why do you think we keep hoping, we keep, yet this person is treating us so badly, they are, not, they, are, they are not showing us that we are still important to them or the relationship is still the kids. Yes, that's, that's very important. Our babies, yes, that's very important as well. Fear of the unknown, that is true and that is so real. Fear of the unknown future, yes. Sometimes it's what people will say. What people will say, you have been known to be, yes. Public opinion, yes. You've been known to be Mrs. So-and-so, or you've been known to be so-and-so's girlfriend or partner. That is, that is your identity, yeah? Because before when you were single, you were Nachi Muli Barbara. Now, when you get married, they say, Mrs. Sentumbwe, or Mrs. Biabashija, hmm, you know, or you just add that name to you. So many people, all of us fear, the first thing we are thinking about is how, what will people say, you know? Then who am I if I'm not, you know, this, with this person? Because probably that's, that's the person you've been with for a very long time, you know? Yeah. So back to this thing, understanding what CPR, relationship CPR is and what your relationship needs. When you understand where your relationship is at, what we just did is we were trying to understand where is your relationship, yeah? And what, when you understand where your relationship is at, are you, let me, let me maybe put it in a way of like, let's say, uh, since we talked about relationship CPR as being first aid to the relationship, there is either a cut, a broken arm, and then a brain damage. Huh? So 
you have to identify where your relationship is at. A cut, a broken arm, or brain damage. I actually think that at the point where brain damage happens, you already saw it coming. Yeah? Basically, you're supposed to start, you know, uh, calling for help at the broken arm. Normally, the cut, you can actually deal with it yourself. You can talk between yourselves. You can, you know, you can manage, you can deal. At the broken arm, that's when you're calling for help, for assistance. That's when you're inquiring with your best friend. That's when you're saying, Banangi, normally what happens if this happens? I've never dealt with this. When a person does this, how can you approach this? Probably some people may fall back on their faith. If you're married, the church you are maybe married, you can talk to your priest, your pastor. Uh, there are different support systems. You can talk to your matron, your, I don't know, best man of the guy, best friend of the guy, your best friend, your circle of friends, your OBs, your OGs, anyone who can help you at this stage of the broken arm. At the point where it is brain damage and it's been confirmed, normally everything happens here. Your comprehension, your cognition, your memories, everything is here. At this point, it is vegetative state. You cannot revive it. Even if you wanted to, probably you're emotionally exhausted. You can't apply yourself to make this thing work. Probably you're so also damaged that you do not, you feel like you should first cater to yourself before you cater to the ass. Yeah, that is, so you need to identify where is my relationship at? Is it at the cut? Is it at the broken arm? Or is it brain damage where I have to cut my losses and deal with my pain, heal myself and let this go and know that I gave it my all. But so this is what you need to, to do. Yeah, to give relationship CPR. Because the, what we're dealing with is what to do when love is no longer being served. After you have identified where your, your relationship is at, then number two, do not make any rash decisions. Yeah? Don't make any rash decisions. I saw someone saying what keeps us there is our kids, our babies, future of the unknown. Use this time to be in waiting. Yeah? So if you, you see where your relationship is at, you understand what you can do to either help yourself or help your partner or help the union. You know, is it friends? Is it family? Is it God? Is it going to church together? Identify. After that, like, don't rush into things. Don't rush to tell people things are not working. Don't rush to tell, because half the people don't care about if your things are working or not, yeah? Don't rush to tell people things are not working. Don't rush to get out. Sometimes the solution is not getting out. Sometimes the solution is deciding in the beginning what brought you together, what matters to you now. Yeah? Sometimes it's saying, okay, when we started out, I liked quality time. And now quality time is not my emotional, first emotional need. My emotional need first is financial support because I'm studying and I need some school fees. You see, yes, you are giving me upkeep. Yes, I'm grateful, but now I need financial support because I need to pay for school. Sometimes it needs you reevaluating. The other thing you can do is get brutally honest, be candid. Normally we avoid problems and we avoid even more talking about the problem. Huh. Yeah. yeah, we are very talking about the problem. And so get brutally honest, identify what the problem is, where it started, and then who did what. And then also ask yourself the right questions. Do you, do you, do we still want this relationship? Or do I want still this relationship? Do I still want to work on it? Am I willing to try? There's, before you even go to the other person, you need to understand where you are at in the relationship. Are you feeling emotionally exhausted and tired? You don't want to talk to relatives, in-laws, friends. You, have, you feel talked out. 
yeah? Do you feel like all oh, this man just needs God and God alone? You, you on your own, you can't do anything, yeah? You need to ask yourself the right questions. What do I want from this relationship now? Do I still want the relationship even, yeah? If I am to end this relationship, what next? How do I go about it? Who are the stakeholders that will be affected because of this? The babies that you talked about. Be very candid about this, you know? Um, and if you're to work on things, what will it take? Yeah? What will it take? Is it time? Is it you being more at home? Is it attending functions together? Is it praying together? Is it uh, giving your partner some space? What will make it? Is it you changing the way you deliver your message? Yeah. I remember I used to struggle with, um, yeah, our time is up. I remember I used to struggle with, uh, with my temper and the way I used to deliver. Of course, yes, someone has done something wrong. And then because you're angry, you say all these things. And then <laughs> after you, you are the one who ends up apologizing. And then the other person's wrongdoing goes unnoticed because you're now apologizing. I'm so sorry for the way I talked to you. I'm so sorry because I overreacted, I think. Yeah. The other thing is where what broke the camel's back. Yeah. Normally there's a series of things that happen, but there's always that one thing where you're like this one, we cannot come back from it. Uh, then tap into your support system. That is very, very important. Tap into your support system. Are there friends that you trust? Ask them how they went about something. Ask them what you can do in a moment. Ask, find someone you can confide in. Relationships can be very sensitive, but there's always that one person that you know, when you tell them your things, they will remain a secret. They will remain with them. They will advise you from the bottom of their heart and they'll give you sound advice, yeah? Uh-huh, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Then recognize your pain, yeah? Where are your pain points, yeah? Because sometimes we have things, yes, we know a series of things happen, but there's one that pains more than the other. And figure out if your partner is able or willing to be in the process of healing you, especially if they're the ones who caused it directly. Things like infidelity. Sometimes they will not be able to do anything about it, but if you can talk about it to see that either it doesn't happen again, to see how you can move on from it, to see it can help. Thank you so much. I think my time is up. If there are any questions, the floor is open. If there are any additions, feel free. Thank you so much, Grace, for sharing. Thank you, ladies, for actively engaging as well. If you have any questions, kindly do share them in the chat room. We're giving you five minutes to share questions. If there are questions you can't ask here, you can reach out to GL directly. Or if you're not in the group, you can also join the Rafa group for more engagement. And of course, Grace and myself and the entire team at G4G is here to continue to to work with you and support you as you preserve your mental wellness and of course continue to pursue your journey of self-love and certainly leadership thank you so much grace thank you have a beautiful afternoon ladies if there are no questions grace i see a couple of comments they're all appreciation messages thank, thank, you, thank you ladies you. So I'm going to end the call. It's been exactly an hour. Thank you all for being here. It means a lot. Until next month, have a